Hi guys, Samantha back here. Um, well, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me again today. Um, today I thought I would show you how to make little skull earrings. Um, you can make these in all sorts of different colours. Um, today we're going to make these guys. Little skull wire wrap earrings. I mean, how cute are these guys? Look at those. Okay, so you make them in all sorts of different colours. We've got pinks and blues, red. Aren't they, aren't they so cute? I'm perfect for Halloween season. I know um, lots of us love dressing up and having a bit of fun at Halloween. And I think these are just a wonderful little guy to, to wear in your ears. And they're so simple to make. Um, so I'm going to just walk you through it today. Um, and I'll show you what tools we need. Obviously to start with, you're going to need some of these little, uh, these are 10 by eight, and I got these off a very large online retail store. Um, but you can get them from um, bead stores. You guys in America have some fantastic bead stores. Um, you can get them off Etsy or you know another sort of auction site as well, um, in any colors actually. So these tiny ones that I'm making today are actually um, 10 by eight. You're going to need some wire. I'd recommend that you get some 0.8 millimeter because we're going to be not only making the um, the wrap for the earrings, I'm also going to show you how to make the ear wire to go with them. Um, and 0.8 is a really a good um, gauge to have for ear wires. So I like to get mine from Scientific Wire Company, but any um, any retailer will sell you some really good wire. Not sponsored, I just like the quality of the wire that they use. You're going to need your flush cutters, a pair of chain nose pliers, a pair of bail making pliers or round nose pliers. I always like to use these six steps in my work because I think I like the um, consistency <clears throat> that using these gives you. You're going to need a emery file or a burr tool to um, make sure that the end of the wire is nice and rounded and not sharp. So I like to use these. They're actually for ladies who do their nails. I have awful hands, so I don't actually use them <laughs> myself, but um, you will need some form of file. You're going to need a small chasing hammer um, or a jeweler's hammer of some description and you're going to need a small bench block and that's for hammering the ear wires on um, and I'll show you how to do that in a little while. Just one last thing probably is um, just a simple ruler just so you can measure out your lengths of wire and I'll explain how much you need um, when we get started which we'll do right now so um, let's gather our materials and let's get going. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you're going to need to measure out your wire. I suggest around about between 25 and 30 centimetres worth of wire to start with. Um, it just gives you a little bit of extra um, room for manoeuvre. Better to have just slightly too much than, than not enough. So you take your pliers and you cut off your length of wire. Remove the ruler. Okay, so you have your length of wire. About six centimeters down from the end of the wire, you're going to need to make a right angle, 45 degree angle bend. Bend this wire away from you so that you have a nice bend. Can you see that? Bring in your bail making pliers. I like to use the smallest one on these smaller earrings, bales. So you just hold the wire nice and firmly. And this part you want to bend towards you because we're going to be making a loop. So bend it towards you so that you have this. Turn your plier 180 degrees, 
take the small piece of wire and bend it nice and neatly over so that you have this. Okay. The next thing we need to do is to create our wraps. Now I know, because I've made a few pairs of these, that we need to wrap seven times around this large piece of wire. So you can either use your pliers, your, your chain nose pliers, or you can use your fingers. Quite often I'll use the chain nose pliers because I like the control it gives, but you can, you know, use your fingers. Bend it underneath, and bend it back round again. Keep spiraling the wire around the larger piece of wire, nice and neatly, until you have seven rotations. Oops, five, six, and seven. So you're left with with this. If it's just offset slightly, you can just use your, your pliers just to bend things into place. Okay, so you're left with this. So you have seven rotations. Chop this little tiny piece of wire off with your push cutters as neatly as you can. And then if there's a little piece sticking up at the end here, just use your pliers just to give it a bit of a tiny smush just to neaten things up a little bit. Keep everything nice and neat. Okay, so this is this stage done. So the next part is to pop on our little guy here. So head first, at the top of the head first, bring him down to the end of the wire so that you have this. We're now going to use this long piece of wire and we're going to wind it round. So however it is comfortable for you, very, very gently and tightly bend the wire around the shape of the skull and over the top of this section here. So you have this. Then, holding this all nice and tightly and in place, bend the wire underneath and then back over the top, keeping everything neat. Okay, and this is what you have. This little head will rotate a little bit to start with, but don't worry about that because we set it into place in the next wrap. So you've gone over, over the top, and round and over so it's back on the top here. Then holding everything firmly, using your fingers and tightly control, bend the wire over the other side of the skull and behind your first wrap. Keeping everything controlled and then back over the top. So you have this. Then we want to bend it underneath again. So with control, underneath and back over the top. Okay, so we now have two wires on one side, one wire on the other, and round again. So twist, little guy. Okay, behind. Rotate it all the way round and then back over the top, then behind, and then back over. Okay, so you're left with this. So you'll see that this design, you will have three wraps on one side and only two on the other. Now, when you're making a pair, you will bend the wire in the opposite direction. So the next skull that we wrap, instead of bending the first wire this way, we will bend it that way. Then what you need to do is bend the wire around 
one more time until it sits at the back like so. If the wire just gets slightly bent around a little bit, you can manipulate it just to straighten it up. And then you want to snip your wire round about here. And then just smush gently this little piece into place. And it really is as easy as that. Can you see? So you have three wires on one side, two on the other, and this little guy is nicely framed. Okay. Okay, so when you've finished making your cute little school wrap earrings, um, let's make um, some ear wires to go with them. Now, if, if you've used um, uh, 0 0.8 millimeter wire, which we have today, that's the perfect um, diameter to make ear wires. And because we had about 25 to 30 centimeters to start with, we have a little bit left over from each of our each of our little guys here. So we'll use the little leftover parts to make the ear wires. So the two little scraps that you've got left, make sure that they measure around about five centimeters each. Okay, we'll make these both together so that they're the same size, the same shape. Okay, so flush cut one end, make sure that they're nice and flush cut and flat at one end. I tend to like to give them a little bit of um, a going over with a, um, and it's actually a nail file I use. Just give them a little bit of a, a file just to make them nice and non-sharp, if you will. Just gives a nicer finish at the end. Come in with the small um, bail making plier, the smallest step, or indeed your um, round nose pliers will be fine. Just just make it as small as you'd like. Make sure that they're exactly the same length. Pop them in the plier right at the very end. With the rotation of your wrist, bend them both at the same time using the pad and of your forefinger and your thumb to control it and you're left with like a P shape, okay? I like to have a larger um, hook for ear wires just in case there are people who um, you want to give these to or again if you want to sell them or whatever who do have thicker lobes so I find that um, if you use the largest um, step on these pliers um, or on your round nose pliers just pop them towards the very base of the plier and you should be fine. So hold both the wires so that the hoop of the P is facing towards you. Okay and grasp them gently. And these two wires here need to be bent around this part of the plier. So rotate it until you get to around about this shape here. So as you can see, because we've done them both at the same time, they both have exactly the same curvature here, which is a really, I mean, it, it's a finished situation, obviously. You can make them individually, but I find that if you make earrings, it's nice to have them both looking exactly the same. So as you can see here, these wires are of different lengths. So I just hold my wires together in my fingers, one on top of the other, as you can see, and then I take my flush cutters, cut them both at the same length, around about here. So we have a matching pair. So what usually um, you usually do with ear wires is to just hold the end 
with your chain nose and just give it a slight kink just because number one it looks nicer and number two I think it's easier to get them in the ear so again the very tip and the very end of your chain nose pliers and bend the wire kink it slightly away from you so you have a matching pair then come in with either your burring tool or um, an emery board and just give the ends a little bit of a, a file just to make sure that they're not too sharp at the end because you don't want to be hitting anyone's ears. Okay, so that's them matching pair. We need to work hard on these a little bit because as at the moment they're a little bit bendy because again it is only copper wire. Now to work hard on something basically all that means is that you hammer it very gently which interferes with the molecules and tightens the molecules up in the metal so that when you do that instead of it being bendy those molecules stick together a little bit more tightly and it gives it some solidity. So what you need to do is to bring in a little bench block and you'll need a very small chasing hammer, a little domed one. You can use other type of hammers, I just choose to use this one because I, I like the feel of it in my hand. Holding the piece at the very end where the little tail is, just gently hammer. Turn over, gently hammer, but only, only very gently. You don't want to be smashing it because that will just flatten out. That'll flatten out the, um, the copper wire too much and you don't want that. So realistically, you just want to very, very gently. And as you can see, when I bend with a little bit of pressure, there's not much give. That's exactly what you're looking for. Okay, so you now have a pair of ear wires. The last thing we need to do is literally just attach your little skeleton guys here onto the hoops. So holding your ear wire flat like this, you take your chain nose pliers and grasp very, very, very gently the hoop and push this part of the wire downwards and you chain nose plier upwards so you're opening that hoop. Can you see? Which gives you space to dangle your little skull earring on. And then when he's on the hoop, push this back up and this bit back down so that you're not distorting that circle. You try and pull it outwards you'll distort the circle this hoop here and you'll have like an egg shape so open close open close okay i'll do it like one more time for you grasp the, the end here push down pull up so that you've opened it in a sideways fashion rather than outwards. Pop your little guy on. And again, upwards and downwards and close it in an up and down motion rather than a side to side motion. And that, my friends, is your cute little pair of skull earrings. Aren't they fun? So I've made these in all sorts of different colours. Pink, you can get the red ones, blues. Um, you can use different coloured wires. I've used silver on, the, on these ones. As you can see, exactly the same. So I hope that was interesting and instructive for you. Um, if you'd like to leave me a comment and let me know if you've made yourself some, I think these are perfect for the holiday season. 
perfect for wearing around the Halloween period. Um, and I just think they're really, really sweet, really cute. I mean, look at them. Who wouldn't want a pair of those? <laughs> Have fun making them. Um, and uh, if you like my channel, just give me a like and a subscribe. And I would really appreciate that. It helps me to build and grow. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.